hello guys yes once again welcome to my youtube channel and thank you all for clicking on this video to watch if this is your first time watching my channel i would like to be with you to go down and subscribe to the red button and click on the bell for notification anytime i post a video today's episode is about Ghanaian first president called Dr. Osajifo Kwame Nkrumah and as at now I want to take you guys around the park that's the Kwame Nkrumah Memorial Park where he was finally buried personally I have been here a couple of times um, to take some portraits of um, wedding couples I have been here several times and a lot of people come here to take pictures as well to learn the history also a lot of foreigners also come here like black americans people from different countries and across africa and the whole world come on follow me as i take you around the place dr kwame Nkuma was born on 21st September 1909 in the western region of Ghana, in a village known as Nkofu. So after his early education in the western region, he moved to Accra and then attended Achimota College where he was trained as a teacher. So after his training, he, he taught in Ghana for some time and then in 1935, he won a scholarship to go and study outside Ghana. So he went to the USA and then attended Lincoln University for his degree in economics, sociology, and theology. So after his degree, he later went to University of Pennsylvania for his master's in philosophy and education. He went back to Lincoln University to teach African languages for some time, and then later moved to London, and then attended London School of Economics for his PhD. So while he was studying at London, he became active in Pan-African politics. And then back then, in the World Coast in the year 1947, the very first political party or group was formed, known as the United World Coast Convention. So Dr. Kwame Nkrumah was invited by one of the leaders of the UGCC to join in the struggle towards independence. So he came back to Ghana in 1947 and joined the UGCC as their party secretary. So in 1948, riots broke out in Accra which led to the arrest of six leaders of the UGCC. So they became popular after their release and became national heroes. So they were given the name, the Big Six. So you have them on our money, six heads on our money. So that's the Big Six. So the, Dr. Kwabu Nkuma, you have Obeche Bilamte, you have Akoeje, you have Willem Oforiata, you have J.B. Dankwa, then we have Edward Akufado, the father of our current president. But then in 1949, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah broke away from the UGCC to form his own party. He thought that the UGCC's approach towards independence was a little bit sluggish. So he left the UGCC in 1949 to form his own party, the Convention People's Party, which is still in existence. And then in 1950, he launched what was called the Positive Action Campaign. It was a series of strikes and protests to put pressure on the British government to grant us independence. Unfortunately, chaos broke out after the campaign and then he was arrested. He was kept at the James Ford prison. So he was supposed to be in prison for three years. But then while he was in prison, elections were held and he was allowed to contest. So he contested and then they had to release him. He won. So the British had to release him after 13 months. So he was released prematurely after 13 months. So here he was still trying to convince the British that we are capable of in our own affairs. And then on 6th March 1957, when Ghana became independent, he was made the first prime minister. So he was then the head of government while the Queen of England was still the head of state. So he was working hand in hand with the British. So where the statue had mounted is the exact spot he stood to declare independence. So this is the history behind it. During the colonial era, this whole park used to be a, an old polo ground for the British. So they used to play the game of polo here. And then blacks were not allowed here. It was a no-go area for the blacks. Wow. So he chose these grounds to declare independence to tell the British that we are truly free. Okay, so that's the real history. Yes. Yeah. So elections were held in April 1960, and Dr. Kwame Nkrumah was elected the first president of Ghana. So he assumed presidency on 1st July 1960. Okay. 
when Ghana became a republic. Nana Sayajman Prempe, the then king of the Ashantis. Okay, so he paid Dr. Kwame Kuma a visit at the Flagstaff house. So Nana Sayajman Prempe was actually the one who bestowed the title of Sajifo on Dr. Kwame Kuma. You know, Sajifo means the people's redeemer. Um, we finally come out to see what is outside here. Sorry we couldn't show you what was inside because um, it's not allowed to film there or take pictures there. So we, we, we weren't able to show you what was going on. So we are here with a beautiful lady called... Naduli. Naduli. Okay, so she's the one taking us. So we are out here for more so okay. okay so this is the broken statue of dr kwame Nkuma. okay so this statue actually stood in front of our old parliament house which is just across the street so an angry mob shot at the statue of dr kwame Nkuma during the heat of the coup. so there was a woman who was looking on as they were destroying the statue so she took the head of the statue and hit the head mm -hmm. of okay. the statue okay. with her till 2009 so she, when it was, she it was presented, head. yeah, she hit the head of the statue with her till 2009 when it was presented to the Information Services Department. Oh, I see. And the hand, who took it? The hand is still missing. Oh, <laughs> We've not, been, we not, we not been able to recover the hand, so... Dr. Kwame Nkuma. It's made of bronze. Bronze. And then, yeah. Okay. And then the statue is pointing ahead. All the stat all that the statue is trying to say is we neither face east nor west. We face forward. So forward ever, backwards never. Okay. Over here we have statues of horn blowers here. And then these horn blowers are actually representing real people. Okay. So normally in a traditional setting, when prominent people die, we have people who blow the horn mm -hmm. to announce their death. Okay, so they are actually blowing the horn to announce the death of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Oh, I see. So that's the that's the reason why we have the yes. Okay. And then we have a statue of a man playing the drums on okay. my far left. All right. So that man over there is representing the southern parts of Ghana. Mm -hmm. you no, know, they normally lower their clothes like that and then they play the talking drum. And then the one on my far right in the smoke mm -hmm. and playing the guitar is representing the northern. The part of the All right. Oh, interesting. Oh. So we have this mango tree over here. Okay. It doesn't look like the normal one. It doesn't look. I, in <laughs> fact, I've been here several times, it's, but it was actually planted in 1991 by Nelson Mandela. 91. Yes. I've been here, but you know, I've never. Notice if it's a mango yeah, tree. It's a mango it's a tree. Flower or something. It's best fruit. It's actually best fruit. Yes. Ah. So let's go to the presidential car and then we come back to the museum. Okay. So over here we have one of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's presidential cars. Okay. So this is an American car, it's a Cadillac. Cadillac. Uh. So in 1966 when some angry Ghanaians were destroying some of his things, the driver of this particular vehicle was scared they were also going to destroy the car. So he drove the car away from 1966 till 2009 when it was also recovered. What did he take you to? He just hid it. No one knows where. But then it was recovered in 2009. Hmm. It was. Is this also a fountain? Okay, so the building we have here is representing a tree that has been cut off. So when you look closely at it, you can see that it's just left with the trunk of the tree. Oh, okay, yes. Okay, Something yeah, like a tree that has been cut off from the middle part. So this is symbolizing the unfinished work of Dr. Kwame Nkuma. He doesn't like pictures. So that's what actually, yes. what it means? Yes, the unfinished work of Dr. Kwame Nkuma. Okay. Wow. And then still with the tree, normally, you know, our farmers, when they go to the farm and they are tired, oh, they rest under trees. Mm -hmm. So we believe Dr. Kwame Nkuma is resting under a tree, and yes, that, a tree. It's true. The water around the mausoleum is actually symbolizing life. That his ideas, vision and everything are still relevant now. So he 
still lives on. His memory still lives on. So that's the meaning of the water around the Muslim room. So it was actually designed by a Ghanaian architect, but then it was built by the Chinese. Oh, okay. Do we have in record the name of the Ghanaian who? Don Arthur. Don Arthur. Oh, okay. I think <coughs> was this built? In 1991. 1991. I think maybe it might be him or something. But the Don Arthur that I know. The guy who some The one who stood for elections, the yeah, fair. Yes, and he lost. <laughs> I don't know if he's an architect. I don't really know. Yes, he, <laughs> Probably if he's he, an architect, he's I think he's, he was I the one. I heard something like that, and it's also. Okay. In so, like I said, inside. Like I said, inside, Dr. Kwame Kumar died in Romania. Okay. His body was first sent to Guinea. So, yes. Guinea is his first burial home. Then, from Guinea to Nkrofo, his hometown. So Nkrofo is his second burial home. Burial. And then the Kwame Nkuma Memorial Park is his third and final burial home. Place. Wow. So this is the tomb of Dr. Kwame Nkuma. And then that's the tomb of Madame Fatia Nkuma. Okay, so she died in Egypt in the year 2007 at the age of 75. But then it was her wish to be buried beside Dr. Okay. Kwame Nkuma. So her body was brought in from Egypt and then was buried. I think that's how we have a relationship with mm -hmm. Egypt. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's about it. That's all? Yes. Okay, so we want to thank you so much. Thank you very much for taking us on the tour. And a lot of things that we, we don't really know, especially the mango tree. Okay. Yes, especially. <laughs> I've been here because I do weddings, uh, I shoot oh, okay. pictures, you know. I've been here several times, but I right. never knew mm -hmm. it was a mango tree. Thank okay. you so much. You're welcome. So, as you've heard it all, it's very educational, very informative. We learn a lot. And I want to tell you out there that wherever you are in the world, anytime you come to Africa, try to come to Ghana and come here and know more and see things for yourself and see all the pictures over there. Thank you. But I want to tell you, don't forget to go down there and subscribe to our channel. Share, like, and leave a comment. Tell me the next thing you, you want us to bring to you, and we'll bring it to your doorsteps. See you. Catch you. Sign up. Bye.